Okay, we're going to cover several topics today. Please make sure you are filling in your notes organizer as I go through the PowerPoint. We're going to start by talking about the properties of water. Water, the simple molecule, is so incredibly useful to living organisms, and we're going to talk about why that is. So first of all, water makes up about 70% of the Earth's surface, and as it turns out, that's about the exact same amount as you'll find inside of a cell. So remember, water helps to maintain that stable internal environment called homeostasis within a cell or an organism, so water is constantly traveling in and out of the cell, and therefore in and out of the organism, in order to, to maintain that stable environment. So what exactly are the properties of water then that make it so useful to living things, to organisms? These are the big five that we're going to talk about. Water is a polar molecule. Water is the universal solvent. Pure water has a neutral pH, which is a value of seven. Water is both adhesive and cohesive. And then solid water is less dense than liquid water. So you should be writing that down. Pause if you need to. So first up, water is a polar molecule. A polar molecule means that the molecule just has a charge, an overall charge. So a water molecule has an overall positive charge. So we've got these two oxygen or these two hydrogen atoms that have slightly positive charges and the oxygen atom that has a slightly negative charge. So the overall charge of the molecule is slightly positive. So that makes it a polar molecule, which means it's great for bonding. Having a charge makes it really great for bonding. Water molecules form hydrogen bonds, which are these very weak, unique interactions uh, that they can form with other water molecules and with other mo molecules in general. The bonds that hold the water molecule itself together are covalent bonds, um, which are when, remember, the electrons are being shared, but they're being shared unevenly. <clears throat> So draw your water molecule on number five in the box. Okay, next up, the next property of water is the fact that water is what we call the universal solvent. So let's get some, some uh, vocab here first. First up is a mixture. You, you've heard this term a thousand times, but let's talk about what it means. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances where the substances retain its individual properties. Remember, that's different from a reaction because in a reaction, you have the atoms being all rearranged into a new product. So a mixture is where you have two substances put together, being combined, but they retain their individual properties. You don't have a chemical change here. So there are two types of mixtures. A heterogeneous mixture is when you have the components remaining distinct, meaning they can still be separated from one another. This would be an example like salads. You could still, you know, it, it takes some work, but you could still ultimately separate the parts of a salad from one another. Or sand and water, eventually the sand would settle and you'd be able to separate it out. Okay, that's a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture um, means that the mixture has a uniform composition. It's completely blended. Cannot be unblended without some sort of you know, reaction or, or something like that. So uh, an example of a homogeneous mixture would be salt water, which you know, is not going to sell, settle. It's going to remain as a mixture. Or iced tea. You can't take the tea out of the water once you've turned it into a, an iced tea mixture. Okay, here's some other vocab for you, because remember, water is the universal solvent. So what is a solvent? A solvent is the item in a mixture that is doing the dissolving. So in most mixtures where you have water, water is going to be the item doing the dissolving. The solute is going to be the substance that is being dissolved in the mixture. So let's say you're making, you know, country time pink lemonade. You're going to pour your little powdered lemonade into the water and mix it all around. Uh, the water is going to be the substance doing the dissolving of the powder. So the water would be the solvent. The lemonade, the powdered lemonade, would be the solute, the stuff that is getting dissolved. So to describe water as the universal solvent, this is number eight, it simply means that water is able to dissolve very a great variety of substances, many different substances. This makes it very, very useful. Okay, the next property of water that we're going to look at is the fact that pure water, remember pure water, not tap water, has a neutral pH of 7. Tap water is going to be close, but pure water has a neutral pH, which the value there would be 7. So I'm going to talk more about pHs in a second, but just real quick, um, acids are when you have a release of hydrogen ions, but the big thing is that the pH is a value of less than 7. Bases, and here's just a chart here to show you some common examples of acids and bases, is when you have hydroxide ions being released when dissolved in water, but more importantly, the pH value is going to be greater than 7. 
So to say that pH, or pure water has a pH of 7, meaning that it has a neutral pH. Now this is really good because most biological processes happen right around the neutral pH value, somewhere between like 6.8 and 7.2. So by water having a neutral pH, it can be used in many, many different types of biological reactions. Okay, property number four, water is both adhesive and cohesive, and we saw this in our properties of water lab where we dropped, you know, water drops onto the penny and that sort of thing. But here's your vocab. Remember, water is polar, which means it's really good for bonding. Water can bond very well to itself, and water can bond very well to other molecules. So cohesion describes water's ability to form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. So water bonding to water, there's the key concept in cohesion. This creates what's called surface tension, which is basically like this in, invisible membrane that forms around like a droplet of water, a bubble of water. So this allows droplets to form on leaves. Um, this allows bugs to be able to you know, walk on the surface of water. And all of that is due to cohesion, water bonding with other water molecules. Adhesion describes water's ability to form hydrogen bonds with molecules other than water, so water bonding to something else. And the benefit of adhesion um, allows us to have things like capillary action, which allows plants to draw water up from you know, the, the very depths of the soil to the very tippy top leaves out throughout the plant. The only way that's going to happen is if the water can literally stick or bond to the vascular tissues of the plant and be able to travel upwards. Now cohesion is also really important because it's got to be sticking to itself inside of the vascular tissue, but sticking to the vascular tissue as well. That's cohesion and adhesion. Okay, so that's number 10 on your notes organizer. Okay, last property is the fact that solid water is less dense than liquid water. So water does something really interesting. As liquid water condense, or as liquid cools to freezing, it actually does condense. But then ultimately, frozen water, ice, is less dense than liquid water. This is why ice floats, and therefore that is very beneficial to living things. Think, because think about the fish during the wintertime, all those organisms living in lakes and ponds and, and rivers and things that are freezing, um, they can still you know, live and thrive and function because the ice is floating on top. Okay, so moving on, our next topic is pH which here's your definition for number 12, which is the amount of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in a solution. But more specifically, we're going to focus on these values of acidity or basicity. Okay, so acids have an abundance of hydrogen ions, which is that H plus ions, and have pH values of lower than 7. So you can see some common acids here. Battery acid, obviously a very, very strong acid. That's why it's very far away from neutral. So the further you get from neutral, the stronger the acid or the stronger the base. Here's where stomach acid falls, lemon juice, vinegar, soda, um, coffee, things like that are all acids here. You can see on our pH range. And then bases have more hydroxide ions, OH negative ions, than hydrogen ions, and have pH values greater than 7. So here's our bases. They're falling above 7. And you can see like really strong bases would be like um, Drano, like liquid drain cleaner. Or bleach is really strong. You can see here that ammonium. Uh, soapy water, things that feel soapy to the touch are often bases because that is a characteristic of a base. Milk of magnesia, you can see here, is basic. Um, toothpaste, basic. Now, don't get confused, because actual milk is actually slightly acidic, which is a common misconception. Okay, most biological processes, we talked about this, occur in that sort of neutral or weak acid base range of about 6.5 to 7.5. So things like buffers, there's a vocab term for you, react with acids or bases to keep a pH within a certain range. So for example, we have certain buffers in our blood that keep the pH of our blood around 7.4, which is what we need for our blood to be able to travel all throughout our body. Um, so buffers are really important. Antacids, if you've ever taken those because you're having sort of a stomach ache, are going to help neutralize stomach acid. So you've got all this acid inside of your stomach, you know, moving around, jumbling around, making you kind of feel sick. So you take an antacid, which is basically a base, and it's going to counteract that acid and neutralize it 
into something that your body can, can handle. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for this video. Um, part two is gonna be on macromolecules, so make sure you watch that uh, and take the notes on macromolecules as well.